Hi, Julie Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. I'm back with a super easy video, but one by popular demand. I've been asked ever since I published my Easter basket cookies a year ago, how the heck did I make those marbled flowers and leaves that go into the top of the baskets? And they're actually uh, pretty straightforward. It's a classic marbling technique. I would say if you've never marbled before, check out my Marbling 101 video first because this is simply an extension of this. We'll be marbling with three colors today to create these daisies and three colors for the leaves. But first, let's start with the daisies. I'm gonna be aiming for something that looks like that or like that. And I've got a whole bunch of other color variations that I'll show you towards the end because by changing a couple of variables with marbling, you can get very different results. And we'll talk about those variables a little bit uh, more as we move forward. The key thing with marbling is to have all your icings at the right consistency before you start and have them all bagged up and ready to go. I work with parchment cones as you probably know by now as opposed to pastry bags most of the time and I have a whole video about how to make those. So I refer you, you to that. And all the icings I like to have roughly at marbling consistency with the exception of one. I'm going to start first by putting down a pretty heavy purple border just to give the cookie some oomph on the edge and for that I like to use icing of outlining consistency so for each cup of my royal icing glue I usually add about a half teaspoon to three quarter teaspoon of water to it so it's relatively thick it holds a nice firm line when I pipe it without spreading too much and that's that's what I want but I think I want a slightly bolder border on these cookies so I'm opening up my tip a little bit I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by outlining the petals with purple you could use another color but I like to have the dark color on the edge Now, if your icing's too thick, it tends to go straight and you'll want to pipe slower to get around the curves. If it's too thin, you need to pipe faster because the icing will tend to wiggle back and, on itself and not, not go straight. So I'm kind of adjusting my speed for the consistency of this icing. Most of my petals look pretty good except for that one. I got a little, a little wobbly, but we're not going to worry about it too much. So many different ways you can decorate daisies. I'm just showing you the ones that are in those baskets because I've gotten lots of questions about them. And you'll notice my piping technique. I touch down to start the line, but then I'm not dragging the tip, sort of letting the icing fall and the natural curve that it will take. And then just touching down again in the center to make contact when I'm done with the petal. If you don't like a particular petal shape, if some look fatter to you and others are too narrow, the best thing to do is to wait for the icing to dry rather completely till it crusts and then take your trussing needle and lift it off and repipe it. If you try to take it off now while it's wet, you'll just smear that purple icing everywhere and it will stain pretty much everything, even these dark cookies. I'm not gonna be too fussy about petal size because in nature, flowers are pretty different anyway. Now, typically, before I would start the marbling process, that's an outlining process, I would let that border crust till it was no longer shiny. That just minimizes the chance of that dark border bleeding into the colors that are going to go inside. But when I marble, all the colors are going down wet on wet. They're going down wet next to each other. So there's always some risk of colors bleeding in the marbling scenario because they are going wet next to each other before they dry. I try to work with marbling icings that are as thick as possible. They certainly can't be as thick as my outlining consistency here because when I try to drag my trussing needle through them to create that scrolly pattern, it'll leave tracks. So they need to be somewhat looser. Typically for marbling, I add a teaspoon or so of water to the icing to loosen it up. But if you get it too loose, then you increase your chances of bleeding. So I try to push it as thick as possible for the task at hand. So just to give you an idea, this was the outlining consistency I used for that purple that went down on the edge of the daisy. It kind of plops off the spoon, whereas the marbling consistency that I've got for the blue, I'm going to be putting blue, yellow, and purple in the flower. It's a lot looser. It kind of runs off more gradually. And I'm also looking just for how it handles under the spoon more often than not. But you can find all my consistency adjustments on my website. One thing I do need to adjust before I can marble this one successfully, my yellow and my blue are at the right consistency is the purple because it was at outlining consistency. So I'm gonna show you how I adjust that because that's a useful task. Again, pretty thick. 
One way to adjust really with control is to have your water in a squirt bottle because you can just put in a very little amount that way. If you overshoot with too much water, it just takes so much powdered sugar to get it back to the right consistency. So I do like to add my water rather gradually. This is still kind of pretty thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more water, trying to get it closer to that consistency you saw with the blue earlier. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to load up another cone with that and we'll be ready to marble. Now, as I said, with marbling, you like to have all your icings ready to go and in their cones because you can't allow any waiting time. Marbling is basically an extension of wet on wet. I'm going to be putting the icings down wet next to each other and then drawing my trussing needle or a toothpick through them to create swirly patterns. In this case, it's a really simple marbling pattern. It's just a, a little stroke that I'm putting down there to create a little frill on the daisy. You can get much more complicated with this and you'll see more complicated patterns in my marbling video. But if you have to wait, you know, if you're getting your icings ready, you put one down and you're waiting to get your other one ready, your icings will set up in the meantime and you'll get a really crusty looking marble, a really cracked looking marble when you run the trussing needle through it. Okay, normally I would have let these set maybe dried a little bit longer. You can still see some sheen in the middle of that daisy. But we're going to move forward. And because I like to work with the icings as wet as possible, I'm going to work one petal at a time or maybe two petals at a time, but I'm not. So I'm going to lay purple, blue, and yellow side by side, stroke it, then do the next one, next one, next one, next one, I'm, rather than laying all the colors at once. Again, for the same reason that if, if I lay all the colors and then come back and put, try to run the trussing needle through it, I'm going to end up most likely with a pretty crun crunchy looking marble. So here I'm just piping the colors in side by side and and where there are little piece little ends sticking up or where they don't quite come to the edge of the petal, I'll use my trussing needle to knock the color over. But that that's filled the cavity pretty well. And now I want to stroke while I can while the icings are still wet to create that marbled effect. Oops. My hands are a little shaky today, so I didn't get quite a good stroke. I stroked twice on that one, and I got a little bit of color down here that I don't like, so I'm going to try to pick that out. Let me continue with that. Let's see how nicely they're flowing into each other. It looks quite good. When I marble, I try not to hit the cookie itself. I kind of tripped up on the cookie when I marbled that first petal, and so I didn't get as smooth a stroke as I wanted because I hit the underlying cookie. I try to be about halfway through the icing. I'm going to complete this one Come all the way around doing the same thing. And I'm cleaning the tip at the end rather than going right directly back in the center and that just keeps any yellow from ending up in the center in that dark purple area. If you wanted yellow there you wouldn't clean the tip and I'll show you that on the next round. So there's a lot of subtlety you can get with marbling. The other thing I would say about marbling is I like to draw dark colors into lighter colors typically. So in this case I'm drawing the darkest color purple through the next darkest color which is blue and then into the yellow. And I think you see the purple in the yellow when that stroke hits the yellow better than if you were to draw the yellow into the purple. So bear that in mind too. I tend to get a better result when you marble dark into light. Any ends here you can knock down if they don't fall down themselves. Now let's talk about the variables that affect marbling. I talked about, I alluded to them at the beginning of the video. There are a couple. One are the number of colors you lay down. So here I'm laying down three side by side, but you can get a very different look if you lay down at just a different set of colors side by side. I'm going to show you some different effects using the exact same method, just altering the colors. And you'll see that the flowers look very different. So one is the colors you use. The other is the manner in which you lay the colors down next to each other or on top of each other. Here I'm laying them side by side, but you can create different mar marbled patterns by piping 
lines on top of a solid color and then drawing the trussing needle through it or dots on top of a solid color and then drawing a trussing needle through it. And you'll see some of those kind of style variations in my Marbling 101 video. And then the last variable is the manner in which you draw the trussing needle or the toothpick through the icings. You could do it in straight lines like I'm doing here, very, very simple, or in squiggly patterns or back and forth. And again, I have a lot of those style variations in that Marbling 101 video. So I'm just gonna complete the last petal and you'll have a nearly completed daisy. One thing I've done with these daisies that you see in front of me, notice how poofy they are and how they have a nice satin finish. I like to finish these cookies when I can, small cookies especially in the dehydrator, just quick dry them for a few minutes at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit. It causes the icing to poof a little bit, which looks particularly cute on these daisies. And it also sets them with less of a matte and more of a, a satin finish, which can be very, very pretty. If I were to let this dry as it is, it might, the icing might sink a little bit and it might appear less matte when it's fully dry. So there you have a simple marble daisy, just some variations on that. Here I did three strokes instead of two, not a big deal. And then just as an example of the color variations that you can achieve, here's an example of me starting with purple, pink, and then blue, and here purple, blue, and then pink. And I've got just you know a, a spectrum of different flowers just by changing the colors around, so it's kind of fun. Now, as far as the center, what to do there, typically I would let that completely dry before I would put a center on top because it's, there's just too much risk of messing it up. And I'm gonna to try to drop a transfer on here to make a center. And I, oops, I did that somewhat successfully. I kind of crunched the icing here to the sides, but I think that looks rather pretty. I can fill in with some dots around it a little bit later if I'm really picky. I'm back with marbling part two. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do these little leaves. Super simple. They involve icings of three marbling consistencies. A light green, a medium green, and a dark green, but also a dark green of outlining consistency. So I'm gonna start this again with the thicker icing going down first, and then I'll adjust it to the marbling consistency when I lay it in the middle of the cookie. So I'm using a thicker icing to create this ruffled edge because if I were to use an icing of marbling consistency, it'd just all kind of smudge into each other as soon as I piped it. So I want something fairly stiff to hold its shape initially. And I'm only gonna outline, these are kind of asymmetrical leaves. I'm only gonna outline one side of them because I find when I do the marbling and I draw, I draw my trussing needle this direction, sometimes an outline on the other side can kind of interfere with the drawing of the trussle ne trussing needle through the icings. So to do this edge, I start by piping a line, as you saw. Now I'm just doing kind of a trailing beaded border, pushing out to create a bead, pulling back, pushing out to create a bead, pulling back. All the way down the side, and it creates this nice little frilly effect. So start by piping the line, touching down, not dragging the icing, touching down to stop stop the flow at the end. Now push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back. You can push the icing way off the side and get the, the edges kind of sticking out even further. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna let those kind of partially dry again till a crust forms to kind of minimize bleeding. And I'm gonna get my green closer to a marbling consistency. Here it is at outlining consistency, clinging to the spoon pretty solidly. So I need it a little bit looser because I am gonna run some right down through the middle of the cookie. And again, I have exact consistency adjustments to a cup of my royal icing glue, like how much water you would need to add to get it to marbling consistency. There is a range on it. Obviously, if I'm marbling a bigger cookie, I might have it looser than if I were marbling a smaller cookie and there was fear of the icing running off the side. So there's always a range on some of these consistency adjustments. I think that's better. I don't want it too loose or sometimes it can lose definition when it's marbled into the other two colors. So back into a new bag. This is the beauty of parchment cones. I don't have to rinse out a lot of pastry bags in between. Just make up a bunch of cones before I get started. And I'm gonna leave We'll try this different ways. Right now I have barely an opening in the cone. You can see what kind of a fine line is coming out. 
I might try a really fine marble through the center of the first one, and then we'll open up the bag a bit, and I'll show you how you might get a slightly bolder look just by making the line a little bit bolder. Okay, so I've got two different shades of green in these other cones, and it doesn't really matter which you lay first. I'm going to start by laying the light green, about filling up about half the leaf with it. You could just do one color in here if you wanted, that's fine too. I just kind of like the two-tone effect. Let me get a little more in the middle here. And where it doesn't come all the way to the end and I want to get into these finer spots, particularly because my icing around it's still wet, I'll use my trussing needle. I'm not going to put this one as close to the edge because I'm going to be marbling off to this side and some of the icing will be dragged that way anyway when I run the trussing needle in that direction. So I don't really want it to run off. You could leave it just like so. This is kind of a wet by wet technique. That kind of looks cool. Or you could just put a little vein, a thin vein down the center like so, wet on wet, and leave it like that. That looks really pretty. But we're going to go ahead and marble it. And again, I used a pretty thin... To marble it, I'm just going to run the trussing needle up in this direction. It's sort of little half circles. You could, again, could do it any which way, but that's what I did on that particular cookie. And I'm seeing little peaks here because my icing might be a little thicker than the stuff I used on the daisies. I could thin it out or I can sometimes just knock those out with my trussing needle. Now let me try that. That's one marbled effect. I'm going to try it with a slightly bigger vein down the middle just to give you a sense of what a bolder leaf might look like. I'm not being too neat with the medium green because as far as the center seam because I'm going to cover it with that dark green line later as you saw so it doesn't have to be super neat. Get it a little closer to the edge of this time. And then I'm just kind of pushing the icing around to make sure that any gaps between the two colors are filled. I have one right here, so I want to push that closed. Not really adding too much icing now. I'm just kind of scooching around with the tip what I have already laid. Just being super careful because that border is still wet. Normally I would let that dry a little bit longer. Okay, and now I'm going to just open up that dark green that I used before the tip a teeny bit. That's open less than a sixteenth of an inch, but you can see the difference it makes in piping it. Again, pretty just like that, or we can just draw little lines through it. And I'm getting little peaks at the end. Again, I think my colors are a little too thick, or it's very dry in here, but I can knock some of that out just with the tip of my trussing needle. So that's a basic marbled leaf and a marbled daisy. In my spring Easter basket video, I show some tips for how you can mount them on sticks and actually get them in baskets and arrange them in various ways. So you might want to check that out. Till next video, live sweetly.